I almost threw up in my mouth listening to some of it back. I appreciated the Hall of Fame thing, but there was a, it was a little self-serving last week. So I'm yeah, but you're not. I'm hold on. I'm going to fuck it. No, I'm going to cut you off here, and I'm going to say that you're wrong. You're wrong. You get to you get inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Not many people do. There's like 20 fucking dudes in the world that ever get that honor, and you have a platform where you get to talk directly to your fan base. And I know you hate saying that you have a fan base, but you do. So <clears throat> you reacting to that um, is a very real thing that I think people that are fans of what you do kind of wanted to see, and it was very real. It wasn't just you know you watching the video sucking your own dick. It was you you know talking about it in a very real and honest way. Um, so no, I think some people it would be sucky. There's other podcasters in this category that yeah, it would just be them blowing themselves. Okay. 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 Well, I appreciate that. That's very kind. And actually, we weren't going to talk about this, but I did see, I uh, see this around this topic of conversation that Tim Sylvia, the lanky streak of piss that he is, the unathletic bastard, gargantuan, uh -oh. weird-looking motherfucker that he is, came out and uh, talked some shit about me, saying no, he absolutely laugh. Yeah, he did. He said it's laughable that I was in the Hall of Fame and that him, Pat Milicic, and somebody else, the fact that they weren't in the Hall of Fame, Jens Pulver, the fact that they weren't in the Hall of Fame just shows it's whoever who uh, kisses Dana's ass the most. What? Like, oh. Okay, Tim. Nice but dim, Tim. Shut up. I mean, look, at, I mean, are you surprised he's not in the Hall of Fame? My God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> look, I, I, I'm not going to hate. I'm also a big Jens Pulver fan. I like Jens a lot. Oh. I, I, he's the man. A uh, really cool guy as well. Um, you know, yeah, I, so, I, I, I as I've become older, I'm not just like a fucking fan the same way that I was. I look at it very differently. Now that also that we've become friends, I know a bunch of fighters. I have a different perspective on it. So I don't. I don't like to just go out and trash fighters and go like, oh, that guy fucking sucks. I have, I have a little more insight now. To get to the UFC, to get UFC gold, you don't suck. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. However, if you're going through all of the champions in the UFC history, <laughs> where does Tim Sylvia really rank on there? And what, you know, for him to point his finger at you, who literally did it clean, who gave up, you know, you have physical issues to this day because, you know, of, of what you did and the, the wars that you fought. You fucking had this this rise to, you finally got your UFC championship. It was such a, it's almost a movie, the fucking story. For him to point his finger at you and say anything after he's been popped multiple times, his the way his career yes. sort of ended, it's kind of crazy. Hold on. Okay, listen, I know you don't want to, you know, you're an MMA fighter, you're in the circle yourself. You know what we go through. You know the sacrifices we make, so to speak. I've walked the walk. Um, I, you've walked the walk, and my God, you talked the talk when the time <laughs> came. But I know you don't want to disrespect a fellow fighter that has the balls to step into the octagon. But as you say, as a friend, as a colleague, as 50% uh, of this excellent podcast that we do can we just collectively say that tim sylvia is a dick will you go out on a limb and do that will you get off that comfortable fence you're on please lewis you know what i'll say it right now fuck tim sylvia bam, 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 i i also have another thing in my life i maybe this is the latino thing i don't know what it is but if you attack my boy it doesn't matter like if that then it's sort of like well fuck you you know it's like uh, it's a uh, you know, we're, we're all friends. If somebody just came down the street and started talking shit to Harrington, even though I hate Harrington, kind of, he's still my friend. I would get his back because I don't fucking know this guy. If it's a, Even if it's a dude that I see every single day, I would get Harrington's back because he's my fucking boy and you're my boy. So I'll just say fuck Tim Sylvia. He's got a lot of nerve. It's also, why do people, it's, just, it's actually a very, it's very telling because you just want to get some sort of relevance by bringing somebody else down. It's like that old school bully mentality where you start knocking somebody down to make yourself feel better. It's like, what, why even take the opportunity? Fine, if yep. you feel as if Pat, Pat Milton should be in the UFC Hall of Fame, I agree with that. Pat Milton should, there's I no doubt about it. I agree. Pat Militich is a, a legend of the sport, certainly in the early days. Jens Pulver, legend of the sport, should be in the Hall of Fame. Maybe, I don't know. Well, first 155-pound champion ever, Jens Pulver. Boom. There you go. My God, you know your stuff, Lewis. You That's when I was a stuff. fan. I'm not a fan anymore. I used to love it back then. But you know what? If Tim Sylvia thinks that I don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Call it a knee jerk reaction. Call it whatever you will, Lewis. I'm coming out of retirement. I'm doing it. In fact, you got you heard it here first. Other than if you're on Twitter a few hours ago, I'm officially out of retirement right now. You, you started. Come test me. Give me your best guys. Dana White, line them up. 
I'll knock them down. I'm out of retirement. Tim Sylvia, you want me to prove? You want me to show you what I've got, what I'm worth? I will do that. Line them up. I'm out of retirement. Boom. There I know you go. the fight. I know the fight. Fuck it. I got it. I got it. Who is it? Who Michael is it? Bisping makes his UFC return as a heavyweight versus Tim Sylvia in his fight. He gets to come back to the octagon, prove it all. If Tim Sylvia wins, he gets your UFC Hall of Fame spot. Write it down. The Count versus the Maniac. My God, it's like something from a Hollywood movie. I can see the, I can see the headlines now. I can see the reports. My God, it's going to do some pay-per-view numbers. No, Lewis, I don't want to fight fucking Tim Sylvia, the ugly bastard that he is. And I'm not one, to, I'm not one to shame someone's looks. But listen, you know, don't, don't, don't start on me and not expect, you know, don't poke the bear. Okay, so I'll poke you back, you fucking like to shoot your piss. But no, I'm gonna come out of retirement today. I am. I've been thinking about it for a while, Lewis, and I am. I'm out of retirement. I, I think. I think the time's right. You know. I mean, I floated with the idea, floated with the idea of being retired for a while, and I just miss it too much. I know. Well, I mean, you're sitting, you're sipping tea right now in a beautiful hotel room. This isn't the fighter lifestyle. You need to go back to your roots. What, 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 what prompted this decision? What was the moment that you said I need to come back out? Of retirement and i need to go and win my title again well i was <laughs> i don't know what it was um uh should, should we stick to this should we keep sure. going i say we just keep yeah, it going I'm, I'm out of retirement everyone do me a favor all you would be mma reporters report on this tomorrow and say it was first documented on the believe you me podcast and get us some likes tell everybody to go to itunes and leave a five-star review while they're at it as well please if you don't mind yeah because this is um, currently active ufc fighter michael bisping's podcast current active former champion hall of fame inductee i don't know if there's anyone in the hall of fame that is actually still competing in the ufc it's crazy i might be i might be breaking down barriers here that's crazy i mean uh, people's people people are saying right now that you are the craziest man in the sport you're coming out of retirement the only hall of famer ever wait oh hold on, never mind never mind <laughs> Harry, this is fact checking right now <laughs> bj pen you fired bj pen yeah <laughs> I love BJ though. I, I absolutely love BJ. Um, Harry, don't let a little fact or a little lie spoil a good, you know, route of entertainment, please. Next time, just just keep your fat fingers out of it. Do not Google. Uh, yeah, man, the, the fights uh, this past, well, there's good fights this weekend. And then from the previous weekend, the, what was this, UFC, what, 238? 238, UFC 238. A lot of action going on. One of the, one of the better cards in a long time. Really good card. I'm sorry for drinking that microphone. Um, really, really good card. But there, there, I feel like a lot of people got overshadowed. Like um, I thought, uh, what Calvin Cater did was amazing. What he did to Ricardo Lamas is ridiculous. Uh, Grasso could have been MVP the way she just kind of outshined Carolina, which no one does. Um, Sterling beating Pedro Munoz, uh, Munoz, sorry, um, probably earning the next title shot. No one's really talking about that. Tatiana Suarez, um, I'm sure we'll get to her getting passed over for the title shot against Nina Ansaroff, but you know, no one's gonna beat that girl. And there's obviously a, uh, a neck issue going on there, which we'll, we'll address. Then uh, Ivanov versus uh, Tai Tuavasa. That one I thought would be, that was the only one where it's like, eh, not the best of fights. But yeah. There was fun times when they were slugging. Your boy uh, Jan versus Jimmy Rivera. Listen, Jan hasn't been in the UFC that long. That motherfucker's moving fast. People aren't really paying attention to that band weight. That guy's a real, real problem, real threat. I think he's undefeated. I think he's uh, only had four fights, but he's jumping up there and quick, dismantling dudes. Um, and then of course, you had, which was kind of the people's main event, Tony Ferguson versus uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, which ended um, doc via Dr. Stoppage in the second round, but not mad at it. It was it, it was really starting to sway Tony's way. Uh, I thought Donald would take taking on more damage, so I'm not mad at the stoppage at all. The late hit, uh, come on. You know, Tony's not a bad guy. It was the heat of the moment, um, not a big deal. The takeaway for me when I when I watched Tony Ferguson versus Don Cerrone, and I think people forgot how good Tony is. Obviously, he's had some uh, outside the cage um, kind of situations come up that kind of overshadow things, and then he's had the injuries. You forget how 
goddamn good Tony Ferguson is. He is the best 155er on the planet for many, many reasons. I think he hasn't lost since 2008 or some shit. He hasn't lost in forever. You look at the dudes that he's beat and what he's done. His last loss was Michael Johnson, 2012. Jeez. Let's go through the list of guys he beat. Okay, let's do it, Brendan. Josh Thompson, Edson Barboza, uh, Dos Anjos, Kevin Lee, Anthony Pettis, Donald Cerrone. So Dos Anjos, former world champion. Anthony Pettis, former world champion. Dude, it's insane, man. And then look, performance of the night, performance of the night, performance of the night, fight of the night, fight of the night. Uh, won the UFC lightweight championship, fight of the night, fight of the night. Has there ever been someone more deserving for a goddamn title shot than Tony Ferguson in the history of the organization ever? Can you name anybody else who deserves it more ever? Not to mention at 55, the deepest division in the world, and he's beat all comers. He has some injuries, pulled him out. Um, he had that weird freak accent with his knee. Um, you know, mate, for, for a long time, like, oh, he's just weird, so they're not giving him title shots or markability. Tell you what beats all that, trumps all that, him winning. Dude hasn't lost since 2008, is in the deepest, most stacked division in the world. And he's not even close to losing. When's the last time he lost a round? Yes, Kevin, Kevin Lee was doing, did well in the first round. Kevin Lee was taking him down, then up getting submitted. Would that be a uh, triangle choke? I mean, this dude is a, I, I, I don't get it, man. And here's, in it, from what I hear, and from what uh, the experts say, is it looks like they're gonna fuck Tony over again. It doesn't look like he'll get the next title shot. It's a steep A DC Brock Lesnar kind of love triangle. So it's a Ferguson, Khabib, Connor situation, right? So Lesnar was the, the the hot chick everyone was trying to fuck in the heavyweight division. Connor's the hot chick in the 155 division. If they can get them, they're gonna jump ship to Old Faithful and go with them. But if the hot chick moves on, then they're gonna go with Old Faithful and be like, all right, well, here you go, Tony. Great, great job, man. You've been on FIFA since 2008. It's like, dude, fuck off. 12, 2012. 2012, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? I don't, and so, obviously the, the kind of, the one thing that we're just, that I think the the sports assuming is that Dustin Poirier is going to lose to uh, Khabib. He's a huge underdog, um, so that would be kind of the wrench in this whole plan. But let's say that, and I'm not saying that Dustin Poirier is going to lose, but odds are he will. So let's say Khabib moves on. The, they're trying to negotiate the Connor contract now. That's all they're waiting for. That's what all the signs point to. Connor wants that rematch. It makes no sense to me. Khabib doesn't want that fight, but it doesn't matter what Khabib wants. I think Khabib said, uh, Poirier, Tony, GSP. Yep, that's what he wants. Um, but it's probably gonna go, if, 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 you know, Scrooge McDuck gets his way, it's gonna go Poirier, Connor, GSP, Tony, you know, depending what they do there. It's a shame. It's such a shame. And I don't get it, man. I don't get it. And I, I really, I really truly believe this. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure I'll get some hate from the Russian fans, but with, uh, Khabib, I, I do think, you know, him being undefeated in the, in the most stacked division, he deserves, you know, to be called the, the number one lightweight on the planet, especially with the injuries, of Tony Ferguson, but stylistically, Tony versus Khabib, I'm leaning more towards Tony by the minute. When I when I look at the the style of Tony, his cardio, uh, the weapons he has, obviously on the feet he has a huge advantage against Khabib. But that's not where this fight's gonna be won. The fight's gonna be won on the ground because Khabib's gonna take down everyone. If Khabib fought John Jones, he'd probably take him down. I hate to tell you, that's how fucking talented this dude is at grappling. So let's say. In some weird world, he gets Tony Ferguson down. I think that's where the fight starts. I think Tony's impossible to control down there. And not only do you have to do it for round one, but you gotta do it two, three, four, five. The only guy in the lightweight division who gets better after round after round is Tony Ferguson. Everyone else takes rounds off. Everyone else, their performance starts to go down.
Everybody. You look at you look at those those top ten guys. Most of them, the, the fatigue starts to kick in. They get tired. They're not they're not as sharp. Their cardio definitely suffers. Not Tony Ferguson. And so a guy against like Khabib, you're gonna get taken down. That's fine. But you gotta make him work. You gotta make him earn that. You can't let him get off punches, which Tony doesn't. And Tony's great in the scramble. There's one thing he's better at Khabib in grappling would be the scramble. He's also much better off his back. Also, his elbows off his back. He's dangerous uh, from guard. So I just think Khabib is going to jump out on top early. Maybe he'll take him down round one. Maybe hold him a little bit because that's Khabib at his best. Round two, similar things, but Tony's going to start getting shots off on the feet, get taken down, but he's making Khabib work this entire time. Then three, four, five, I got Tony all day. All day. Wouldn't be surprised if he got stopped via doctor stoppage, TKO due to cuts from elbows from the ground. Could be totally off and Khabib just murks him because Khabib's an absolute killer and being whatever, 27-0 at 155 is insane, but I don't know, man. Just stylistically, I like Tony in that fight right now. I'm really high on Tony right now. And I, it's just such a shame that most likely if they can figure out a Connor agreement that Tony's going to get passed up again. I don't know how you do it in good conscience if you're the UFC brass. Like, how? what do you tell Tony? Sorry, dude. Uh, here's this guy. Or, you know, let's do the rematch with Cowboy again. It's like, what are we doing? No one really wants that. It's fucked up, man. It's so fucked up. You look at his resume. I don't care that he wears sunglasses inside or that he's different than the other fighters. I don't care about any of that. When it comes down to straight fighting, him versus Khabib is the best fight at 155, maybe ever. As far as straight talent, technique, resumes, Ferguson Khabib is the best fight in lightweight history. As far as credentials, talent, uh, win streaks, that I mean, one guy's undefeated, one guy hasn't lost than two on 12. Come on, man. It's so easy. It's so easy. But um, it's just not, unfortunately. And I, and I say this about boxing. It's the problem with boxing, right? You don't get the fights you want to see. Um, with the UFC, you'll get fights you want to see regardless, but sometimes it's not always the right one you want to see. Sometimes it's more of the entertainment fight where you still want to see it. Do I want, would I watch Conor versus Khabib? Yeah, but I know one guy's getting really fucked over, so I don't feel good about it, if that makes sense. And the other thing is Tony, like, he's also not like uh, Khabib or nothing. I'm not taking any other shots. So... The UFC knows that they can keep kind of fucking him over because he just wants to fight. It's kind of guy Tony is. So when they're like, you down for the rematch? He's like, yeah, I'll do the rematch. I don't care. It's like, no. Why'd you open that door, dude? Why Why? Why even entertain that? If he went, are you kidding me? I'm not doing shit till I get my title shot. Then at least the UFC knows where they stand. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.